Click Forms Information, UAD Training, Part 2, Universal Appraisal, appraisal Data Set, picking up at 5 minutes, 21 seconds. That it'll sort of convert the data for you before it rolls into the form. So when it comes in, it'll automatically be UAD compliant, and you can just take off from there. We're going to go ahead and leave uh, these options the same in the WebMath itself. If you create a report, um, either with a template, a clone a file um, from scratch, Open the existing file, it's going to ask you this question. I'm going to go ahead and create this form a template. It will ask you, this is a non-UAD compliant report. Do you want to apply the UAD compliant rules, yes or no? If it doesn't require the UAD rules, you can answer no. And then the report and the program will function exactly as it has before UAD, sort of status quo business as usual, you just go from there. If it does require the UAD uh, tenants, then you would hit yes, and that will do a couple things. I'm going to go ahead and hit no and open up my report. I've already got started for this. If I can get to there. Sorry about that. Created a technical glitch. All right, so I've already got the report started, and what it will do is it will turn the fields that are under the UAD requirement when you turn it on um, in green. Um, all the fields that are green are uh, under the UAD requirements. The blue fields are not under your empty fields. Uh, may not be blue, that's the default color. Um, but the UAD field will definitely be green. So green means in the a UAD field. And you can see here, uh, not all the fields by any means are UAD fields. So about a third of them on page one. You get down to the grid, it's kind of a sea of green. They want uh, a lot more grid, uh, you know, almost all the grid information, including all the adjustments potentially. So. Most of those are green, and then we'll go to page three. The cost approach has a few UAD fields. And then finally, when we go to page six, the certification or signature page, it's got some uh, company name, address information, date the report was signed, effective date, your licensing information. Let me talk about the licensing information. Some that's come up when UAD has, has gotten going here. Um, they want uh, either, the, either the certification information or the licensing information. They don't want both. Um, so if you put both certification and license information in, uh, that will get rejected and considered invalid. They want one or the other. The premise basically is, or the implication is, if you're certified, the, the, the assumption is your license. So if you're certified, you just have to provide the certified information, certification information, but not the licensing information. If you're simply licensed, then you provide that information. So just know that. Also, for the uh, lender client name here at the bottom, um, there's company name and lender client name. Lender client name is specifically the name of the management company. That's what needs to go there. Um, the company name is generally the bank. Now, if you're just dealing with a management company, it would be the same for both. Um, but the lender client name specifically needs to be the name of the management company. And just so you know that, if some questions have come up in the, in the course, that is what's required for that field. Let me talk. I have a UAD a two-page definition of terms form. It's an uh, optional addendum to add. Um, you can set it to add by default. It's not technically required, but it's highly recommended that you add this form, this two-page addendum form, and most of your lenders will probably require it. Um, page one of the definition shows the uh, condition ratings and definitions, um, the C1 through C6 that I'm sure you've all heard of. It details word for word what the definition of uh, C1 through C6 is. And then also the quality of construction rating definition, Q1 through Q6. Details here word for word what they are. Then at the bottom it talks about um, improvement definitions. Well, not up to, they're, they're looking for improvements of the subject property. Um, they're looking, you know, what is defined as not updated, updated and remodeled. Um, and then also the bathroom count, and we'll go into that about um, what you need to, uh, how you need to define uh, the bathroom. And then also, um, page two of this is a list of abbreviations that are used for UAD, um, what the abbreviations stand for, and then on the right here, some of the fields they show up. Like again, this isn't required, but it's highly recommended, and many of your lenders probably will require it. 
it's a good thing to have in there, um, particularly for the end recipient, for the borrower, so they can kind of look at it and understand some information that is now being required to be put in the report. But it may be for lenders, underwriters, even for uh, yourself that as you're going through, you can refer to it um, related to UAD stuff. All right, and then the UAD subject details. This is kind of that power user sheet. We'll go into that at the end. That's what it looks like when we'll do that. But first we'll go back to page one. And again, the green fields are UAD fields. Not all of them have a pop-up window. The property address we click in there does. Uh, you enter in the street name and street number in the first box, the city, state, and zip in the others. Um, it's primarily a pop-up box because of the state. Um, this address seems to be uh, USPS or US Post Office um, valid. And that primarily relates to the state. Um, if you click on the down arrow, your only choice of state will be the U.S. Post Office two-digit, or I'm sorry, two-letter state abbreviation. The states need to be two capitalized letters for each state. Um, so it's states like Utah and Ohio that you can spell out. If you were putting that in the state field, that would be valid. Um, Tennessee, if you're using T-E-N-N -N or Montana, M-O-N-T, those aren't valid. Tennessee would be T-N. Utah would be UT, Ohio would be OH, Montana would be MT. So as an example, if you use the pop-up window, the only choice you have are the valid ones. So it's no, you know, you don't have a choice to get it wrong. It makes it there. But if you're using the power user sheet or clone your report and the data is there, just be aware that's the primary um, thing as far as it needs to be USPS standard addressing and that state abbreviation is a big one. The zip code in the city, those are generally match up. But if you do have something where your local standards or appraiser standards you have a city or a zip code that's at variance with what the U.S. Post Office has, you need to go with what the Post Office has if you get in that situation. But so I feel that are green that don't have pop-up windows patch here. Um, there's no pop-up window. The formatting is deemed to be straightforward. Um, they're looking for a year, which at this point in the game is a four-digit number. I just enter in 2010, for example, leave the field. It turns it white, which is a valid, correctly entered UAD field. No big deal. Now, if I would have accidentally left off a zero and tried to leave the field, um, this is one of those ranches on the, uh, first, the uh, first look where you can get a field that isn't a UAD valid field, it, but it turns it orange. So anything you see that's orange on your report, that's an indication to you that, hey, this field is not valid content for UAD. Um, it varies, obviously, what would be wrong with it. In this case, it's that I don't have a valid year. Uh, all I need to do is put in zero to make it valid, and we're good to go. Real estate taxes, um, that's a number field, same as special assessments and HOA. Um, anything that's asking for a dollar value or a number, the formatting, as I said earlier, uh, no letters can be entered. Um, it has to be a number only, um, and it has to be rounded to the nearest whole number. So if my real estate tax is $1,280, I just enter those in, put the comma in, we're good to go. Special assessments. If I don't have any special assessments, and I try to put in N for none or N dash A, it doesn't let me. Again, remember, if it asks for a number, you can't put in any letters of any kind. Um, you just basically put in zero if there isn't any or if it's not applicable. Now, for HOA, say my HOA is $80 a month. Or I'm sorry, say my HOA is $79.88 a month. I would just make that $80. You need to round up. Um, so if you, if you, most of you probably do that anyway. If you're not, if you want to get in the habit of it with UAD because that's required. If I tried to put in $79.88, what's going to happen is because all the rounders, uh, the numbers need to be rounded, it ignores the decimal point. So it turns $79.88 into $7,988. Obviously way high and way wrong. You would just enter in 80, you round it yourself, and away you go. Let's go down to the 12 month prior history. Uh, this is where we got our, uh, not our first pop-up, but our uh, uh, first pop-up where we have some questions to answer and some assistance. These pop-up windows kind of work like TurboTax. Um, you have certain questions you need to answer, certain fields you need to fill out, um, and it will help you. If you try to leave a field with something that's not filled in that you need to or something filled in incorrectly, it'll pop up an error telling you, um, you know, and, and what you need to do. And then once everything's filled out and you save it, it'll enter all the information you typed in or entered or selected into the field in the proper UAD format, which is a little bit complex. We'll see in a minute once we get it loaded in. So that's kind of how these pop-up words when they come up. So at the top, I have two questions, one of which I have to answer. Um, it's the first question is yes, the subject is currently offered for sale or has been offered in the last 12 months, or no, the subject is not currently listed nor has been offered in the last 12 months. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose no for this for right now. And then if I hit no and hit save, uh, it's not going to let me out of here. Because even if I answer no, either way I answer that first question, I need to provide at least one data source must be entered. And it lets me know it's not going to let me out of the field until I get that done. So here we go, data sources. Need to put one in. I'll go ahead and put in my, my MLS. If I had a second MLS, I can add that in. Um, and as many as needed in there, and then once I've got no in my MLS in there, I can save out. It checks the box for me and enters in my data source or MLS, which are the minimum requirements if I answer no. Now, if I answer yes, that's going to free up all these fields in here of which I have to answer. If I had yes answered in just my data sources and tried to get out, again, it's not going to let me. It's going to say, hey, you need to fill this in at bare minimum. So keep going. So it says the days on market must be specified or... Okay, I'm ending it at 16 minutes and two seconds.